Our final video looks at reversing trig calculations. In other words, given a trig ratio, finding the angle that it came from. So what we've seen so far is that trigonometric ratios take a given angle and produce back the ratio of two sides from a related right angled triangle. So in other words, they take an angle and give back a ratio. But what about if we wanted to reverse this and say, given the ratio of two sides, or given two sides that are known, what is the angle of the triangle that they sit in? Or what is the angle that the trig function is, is coming from? So if we think of the trig ratios as functions, we can use an idea of the inverse function. So remember uh, earlier we talked about the natural log and the exponential function. These were inverse functions of each other and could essentially undo each other. So if we had, for example, e to a power, we could find that power by taking the natural log. Log of e to the x is just x. And similarly, e to the log x is x as well. So these inverse functions cancel each other out. For certain specific values, you can actually do this um, by memory for trig functions. But in general, what we need to do is define an inverse function for sine, for cos, and for tan. And then we use our calculator or our computer to figure out what the inverse trig function value is. If you like to see it in writing, the idea is that given a, where sine theta is a, we want to be able to write arc sine of a equal to theta, where arc sine is this inverse function for sine. In other words, sine inverse of a is equal to theta. And similarly, if we had b, where cosine of theta is equal to b, we'd want to be saying arc cos of b is equal to theta, or cos inverse, the inverse function of cosine, is equal to theta and similarly for other trig ratios as well, trig functions. Now as I've said up here, there are some values where we'll actually be able to learn these off and they can be tabulated, but in general you'd be going to your calculator or your computer to figure them out. So that's what this example is about. We're going to use our calculator to figure out some of these inverse trig ratios. Now remember the arc, that's just another way of writing the inverse function of, so arc sine, that's just sine inverse. And the good thing is your calculator has buttons for these things. So if we look here, we've got our sine, cos, and tan. And what we need to do on my calculator anyway is press the inverse button, and they all become sine inverse, cos inverse, and tan inverse. And that's how that works. So let's try out uh, the first example. We've got to find arc sine of 0.52. So 0.52 inverse sine gives me 31.3 approximately. 31.3 watt, is it radians or is it degrees? See, in this, this type of example, it doesn't matter what, um, what mode your calculator is in, you'll always get a correct number back, but it's up to you to write down which one it is. So in this case, I'm in degree mode, so that will be 31.3 degrees. So I'm going to pop up here and put a little degree in. If your calculator had been in radian mode, you'd get a different number but it would be just as correct as long as you didn't put a degree symbol in front of it. Now let's just have a think about this for a moment. What does that actually mean? This is saying that 31.3 degrees is the angle which has a sine 0.52. So in other words, it's like saying sine of 31.3 degrees is 0 0.52. It's just the reverse way of writing it. That's how inverse functions work. So let's check out the rest of these. We've got the cosine inverse of minus 0.17. So 0.17 minus inverse cos looks like it's about 99.8 degrees. Okay, why don't you pause the video and have a go at C, D, E and F yourself and then when you come back the, the answers will be here and I'll quickly run through those. So pause the video now and try those out yourself. So you can see now that I've got the arc tan of 4.7 is about 78 degrees, arc cos of 0.9 is 25.8 degrees, arc tan of minus 0.1 is about minus 0.57 degrees, and finally arc sine minus 0.98, the angle that would give you that sine value is minus 78.5 degrees approximately. Now I'm starting to think that there's a bit of a problem here because I remember back to when we plotted the cosine function and it looked something like this. 
and I was saying that the function just repeats itself on and on forever and the same back in the opposite direction. And if we just look here at cosine theta against theta and let's just say I picked out the number 0 0.5 this graph tells me that there is a value of theta here another one here another one here another one here and probably many more on towards infinity in both directions there are multiple theta values in other words this one this one this one this one and all of the rest which will produce a cosine theta value of 0.5 so in other words that's saying if I want to figure out the arc cos of 0.5 I'm not exactly sure what the answer is it could be this angle or it could be this angle it could be this angle, this angle, or any of the others. The calculator seems to give me an answer. So I could jump on there and say 0.5 inverse cosine gives me 60 degrees. In fact, it gives me this angle right here. What about all these others? Are there other ones that we could get as the arc cos of 0.5? Well, the answer is yes, but unfortunately your calculator will generally only give you one. One thing we do do though is to actually narrow it down a little bit by always talking about angles between 0 and 360 degrees. So generally we'll ignore what happens out here and what happens out here because these are just repetition of the same things. But it still leaves us with two possible values to give us that particular value for cosine. And it's that issue that we're going to look at now. Again, I'm going to focus on the cosine function and a particular value of the cosine function here 0 0.216 and I'm going to take you through this by example but similar thinking applies when you look at the other functions and other values of the functions so first of all if we use our calculator it gives us that the arc cos or cos inverse of 0 0.216 is 77.5 degrees approximately now this is one possible answer to arc cos of 0 0.216 we're going to use what we just saw with the cosine curve and also this Cartesian plane here to help us figure out what the other possible answer is. So remember, if we look at 0.216 for cosine of theta, there's one possible value here and another possible theta value over there. So theta 1 is this 77 degree angle and theta 2 is something else along the line. So let's look in the Cartesian plane. Where is an angle of 77.5 degrees? Well, it looks like it's about here somewhere. 77.53 degrees. And what we want to do is figure out some other angle between 0 and 360 which has a cosine value of 0 0.216. Cosine of theta is 0 0.216. Well the first thing we can note is that because of the the way that the cosine is defined, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine will always be positive in the fourth quadrant and in the first quadrant, but not in the second and the third. So first of all, we can rule out all angles in these two quadrants because they would have cosines which would be negative. So cosine of 0.26 is going to be giving us an angle either in the first quadrant, which we've already found, and actually another one in the fourth quadrant. It's going to have to have the same angle here, but it's just that when we re, uh, represent it on the Cartesian plane, it's going down from the axis instead of up. So what we're going to be looking for is something that's down 77.53 degrees. Now since we want angles that are between 0 and 360, let's look at how we would generate that by going from 0 all the way around back to here. In other words, 360 degrees, a full revolution, minus 77.53 and that's the calculation we've got here 360 minus 77.53 gives us 282.47 and you can check that on your calculator 282.47 what's the cosine of that 0.216 approximately so we've got our right angle there or our correct angle rather so it's a little involved but with plenty of practice it starts to make a bit more sense so looking at the other ratios, or the other functions, the sine function is positive in the first and second quadrants because it's equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tan is positive in the first and third quadrant. It's negative in the second and the fourth because it's equal to the opposite over the adjacent of the triangle. And so to summarize this idea, 
When you calculate the inverse trig functions, we only get one angle when we use our calculator. So for the other angles, somewhere between 0 and 360, there'll be another one. Calculate the other one, we need to determine which quadrant the angle is in using this cos all sine tan picture, or some people call it the cast diagram, and then figuring out what the corresponding angle is, somewhat like the calculation we did here. To figure out what that second angle is, assuming the calculator gives you a value between 0 and 90 degrees, the second angle, let's call it alpha, is given by one of these three options. And the option that you pick depends on if you want an angle in the second, third or fourth quadrant. And you decide which one you want using this work here. If it's not between 0 and 90 degrees, there's a little bit of a tweak, but I'm going to leave that for you to figure out by looking at the worksheets. You can also check it out in any textbook. So let's have a look at three final examples before we finish up this video. So the first example, arc sine of minus 0.72. This means we've got sine of theta equal to minus 0.72. So in other words, what's the angle theta that gives us a sine value of minus 0.72? So the first thing we can do is go to our calculator. 0.72 inverse sine gives us minus 46.1 degrees, approximately. So that's one value for the arc sine of minus 0.72. For the other, we need to figure out which quadrant the correct angle is in, and then figure out what the corresponding angle is. So first of all, we note that we've got a value sitting about here for our first, minus 46.1 degrees. And we've got a sine value which is negative. So sine is less than zero in which quadrants? Well, it's not in this one because all of the trig ratios are positive there. Sine is positive over here, tan here, and cosine down here. So if we want sine to be uh, negative like this, then we need to be looking at this quadrant and also this quadrant, not these two because sine's positive up there. So we already have our first value giving us this particular triangle. We want another one over here. We need to go that same angle there, but down from this axis. So we're looking like that. So in here, in the triangle, we've got an angle of 46.1, and we need to figure out what that is if we'd actually gone all the way around. So it's going to be 180 plus 46.1. So that's our calculation there for the other angle, 180 degrees plus 46.1 degrees gives us the second value of 226.1 degrees. So arc sine minus 0.72 has these two values. For the next example, we've got arc tan 2.6. So in other words, what angle gives us a tan of 2.6? Inverse tan of 2.6 gives us 68.9 approximately. 68.9 degrees is one answer. Now we want a tan, which is positive. So looking at our picture, our cast picture, cosine, all, sine, and tan. Tan is positive here and here. So we need 68.9 added onto 180 degrees. So 180 plus 68.9 gives us 248.9 degrees. The final example, arc cos of minus 0 0.43. 0 0.43 minus inverse cos is 115.5 degrees. And then we need another angle which has a negative cosine. Cosine is positive in this quadrant, this quadrant, not this one, and not this one. We've already got the angle in quadrant 2, so we need then another one in quadrant 3 and that's going to be 360 degrees back 115.5 degrees which is 244.5 degrees so those are our two possible angles that give us a cosine of minus, minus 0.43 okay this stuff's a bit tricky so make sure you try some of the examples if you're still not getting it um, come along to the workshops and ask some more questions or ask some questions online or you can always check out plenty of examples in textbooks and on websites that you can find around the place. So always just let us know though if you need some, uh, some extra help.